All right, we're back in the special exhibit here at the 2020. Am I not? Allowed? No, you can do whatever you want. We're at the special exhibit here at the 2023 Munich Show, and I've got a uh, resident superstar, uh, movie actress, uh, you know, highly in demand artist, Tama Higuchi Ruse. I know I said it wrong in the earlier. Got it right this time. She me. <laughs> um, and we're actually standing in, in front of five, I think these are all yours, right? Yes. Five paintings of Tama's. And Tama, how many paintings do you have in the overall exhibit? I have around 12 to 14. I haven't quite counted yet, um, but quite a few specimen uh, painting sets actually all over the gallery here today. Super. So, and you've seen a lot of them. She did that rabbit ears blue cap that you've seen many times already on this video. Um, what I wanted to ask you is you're here, you're able to see all these different pieces of art. You and I have spent a lot of time talking about Eberhard Eckwood. And I'm, I know you've seen some of the prints in his book. Alicia just got her one of his books, so he scored big points for that. <laughs> um, but here at the exhibit, you have actual paintings of his. All the art here is original artwork. So I wanted to really kind of get your idea on, or your input on what kind of influence that has seeing actual live artwork versus, you know, seeing prints. Right. So, of course, I've been studying Eberhard Eckwit as well as other mineral artists for years now, ever since I became, uh, be began painting. Um, but, of course, because a lot of these paintings are hidden away in private collections, you don't see them very often. So, when I studied his work, it was mostly through prints and the books that he published. So, in this exhibition, of course, we have the original works, and that has made a huge impact in the way that I look at his art. Because versus prints, which are flat, just, you know, a scan of the painting that's reproduced, you can actually see the brushwork and the process that he used when he was making his paintings. So if you look at his work, and even if you look at it in certain angles, depending right, on yeah. the lighting, you can actually see the buildup of the paint. And then even areas where he used different mediums, like uh, watercolor versus colored pencil, versus uh, acrylic, or even um, the sketch underneath you can see. And there was even one painting that we looked at where you could see in the paint, he pressed a point in to make divots in the depth of oh, the cool. paint. Okay, yeah. And that created the etching uh, texture of that particular specimen. So of course, being here uh, to see this exhibition with all of these paintings together is a really once in a lifetime opportunity. It's a real yep. privilege to have Certainly this all is. together. Um, and as an artist, this is so, so important for me because this is how you learn from other artists. This is how you see their processes, see how, you, how they worked. And to have all of this together is also a good thing, not just for me, but for the audience who rarely gets to see this kind of exhibition all together. It's a very, very special thing um, that they've done at the Munich show this year. And just the, the amount that I've learned just from these three days that I've been here is, is remarkable, really. Well, now, when Al and I were going around, and especially when we were looking at the Amsonite Smoky Quartz uh, prints that Eberhard did, we, just like you described, but from a non-artist perspective, right. we went to the side and we can see all the buildup. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in some cases, he used probably a single hair brush yes. to just kind of create striations in the darkest part of the shadows kind of thing. Exactly. And so I thought that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. You work primarily in, or almost exclusively in watercolor. For the most part, Eberhard did the same. He was always about watercolor, but that didn't seem like it was a um, a characteristic of watercolor. So it exactly. made me kind of wonder, did he use mixed media a little bit to certain degrees? I mean, maybe you can comment on that. It's your interesting you mentioned that, because I thought the same thing, that Eberhard's work was all watercolor. And looking at the, the prints in his books, that you would probably guess the same, maybe for the highlights, color pencil here and there. Um, but when you actually see it in person, watercolor is a very flat medium. It's done in these uh, washes, of course, with water and pigment. So it doesn't have buildup over the paper. Mm -hmm. But when you see Eberhardt's work here in the gallery, you actually see in some areas buildup, physical buildup, like what you see uh, with acrylic or oil even, or even gouache. Okay. So even though he probably worked primarily in watercolors, you can tell there must have been some other medium that he used as well, which is, again, one of the things that I've learned at this exhibition. Now, does that inspire you to experiment and to try 
recreating that same kind of effect with your work? Absolutely. I mean, I, as soon as I get home, I'm probably going to order myself a gouache set or some acrylics because um, that's a technique I've never used before. And seeing that other artists have done an incredible job of using that to our advantage, I really want to try that as well. It's so inspiring. Um, so all of these paintings I've done here, this is all uh, just watercolor, no other medium. And I think when I get home, uh, immediately, as soon as I get to my desk, I think I'm going to start experimenting with other things as well to get that same effect or even uh, my own spin on those kinds of techniques. And that is fantastic. And I love that because that just adds another layer to the importance of what was created here, thanks to Christoph Keilman and to uh, um, uh, Mark Mothner. The fact that as collectors, people can come here and appreciate the art and the minerals mm -hmm. as um, as aficionados of art, you can come and you can see these different things and you can learn more about the specimens. We talked a little bit about having like a thumbnail blown up to like an 11 by 14 canvas. Right. It allows you to see elements of the specimen that you wouldn't notice with your normal eye mm -hmm. and therefore by seeing the print, it pulls you back to the specimen. Exactly. But the thing that kind of really excites me the most is that as an artist, you are able to examine some of, some of this stuff and it is going to affect what you potentially do in the future. So by this very, the, the, the very fact that this exhibit exists, mm -hmm. we may see different things coming from you elevating the artwork of mineral art. Exactly, so well said. And you know, that I think really speaks to the importance of an exhibition like this. Um, it's an unprecedented thing that Christoph and Mark put together. I mean, we've never had an exhibition, all these different artists together with their specimens as well, so you can yeah. see what directly inspired the work. Um, and it's a learning opportunity for me, for other artists here, for the visitors, um, mineral collectors and otherwise. And it's really a privilege to be a part of this, finally. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Tiama, thank you for all your contributions to this exhibit. And thank you for taking time for this uh, interview. Thank you very much, Brian. Rock on. Go get your gouache. <laughs>